Hey guys, Mark here, hope you're all well. Well, we're here at CW Motorcycles in the south of England testing the Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor today. Stay tuned and I'll let you know what I think about it. Hey guys, Mark here. Well, I hope you're all well today. Uh, got a lovely uh, early autumn day here in the south of the UK and today we are testing the uh, lovely, brilliant Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor. This is kindly known to me by the guys at CW Motorcycles. Uh, do check them out, they've got a really uh, nice display of Royal Enfields at the moment. Um, so let's just run through the specifications on this lovely bike. Um, this is coming with a uh, 648, 648cc parallel twin and it's a single overhead cam and um, this is air and oil cooled so no no water no liquid cooling on this quite basic stuff but that adds to the charm I think um, it's got 47 horsepower so A2 license compatible at 7100 revs so it's quite a low revving engine this one 52 newton meters of torque at a nice low 4000 rpm as well so not about revs this bike not about hurrying it's just about a nice relaxing pace taking in the scenery uh, tires on this we've got a 100 section on the front and these are pirelli phantom sport comp and we have a 130 section on the rear 18 inch wheels on this 804 millimeter seat height on this so not too bad it's a nice narrow seat so quite easy to get your feet flat to the floor even for shorter riders like myself now I'm five foot seven I'll chuck in a cut scene right now for you to have a look how I fit on the bike so bear in mind I'm five foot seven with a 30 inch inside leg Just under 14 litre fuel tank on this and I would have thought you'd get about a good sort of 55 maybe 60 to a gallon out of this if you're taking it steady 213 kilograms wet weight on this bike so not exactly a lightweight but not really really heavy either so still nice and easy to handle So other models in the um, Royal Enfield range, you've got the Continental, the Himalayan, the Classic and the Bullet, which is another one that I really like. So brakes on this single front disc by the make of Bybury, which I believe is uh, made by Brembo. Uh, top speed of this probably around about 100 miles an hour but it's all about just cruising at sort of 60 70 i would say so price wise you've got um the red and black which is this one which comes in at 5899 5899 pounds also you've got the red and white as well at the same price and then the orange and the silver come in at 5699 a uh, little extras they put on this Royal Enfield screen, Royal Enfield mirrors, you've got the engine bars they've put on and also they've changed the air filter to help it breathe better and it does make a nice little rasp now from the air box. But fixtures and fittings wise, fit and finish, all looks really nice to me. So I mean when you think it's, you know, it's only about five and a half, 
five seven five eight you know it's not like masses of money and you're getting a really nice bike here I do like those piggyback shocks there um, little space here there's a tool kit behind there I just had a just had a little look and I tried to lift the seat up I couldn't see the latch but there's not much room under the seat I don't think there's anything under the seat so guys what do you think of that I think we should take her for a test ride. So guys, welcome aboard the Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor. I have to admit, I've been itching to try one of these out for quite a while now. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here to bring this to you guys. So when you first sit on the bike, um, it does feel a little bit heavy off the side stand. I mean, it's an, all, it's an all metal bike. There's no real plastic on it as such. So it does feel very solid. Um, now, as you probably can see in the cutscene, um, I'm only five foot seven, 30 inch inside leg, and my legs are flat to the floor with the knees slightly bent. Um, the foot pegs are in such a position that they do sort of hit on your calf muscle. So do bear that in mind, but um, just, just something to be aware of. Put, put your legs either forwards or behind them. So very very simple little dash old school sort of clocks you've got your fuel gauge there and odometer and I'm guessing that's the trip A trip B that's it that's all you get <laughs> pretty basic stuff rev counter ABS light engine light neutral oil and battery so let's start up oh that's lovely so when you start it up you know you've got that lovely parallel twin I do believe it's a 270 degree crank on this, so it's got a lovely, lovely throb to it. Just a nice little bit of vibe coming up through the bike. So no, no adjustment on the clutch or the brake lever, but again, they're set at a nice distance, so no problems there. Nicely into first gear. And pulling away. So very, very nice, very light clutch, nice early take. I always like a nice early take on the clutch. So guys, off we go. So straight off, you're greeted with a nice parallel twin punch from low RPM. Feels very nice so far, I'm liking this. Gearbox is sweet as a nut, beautiful. I'm just going to cruise on this test ride guys, no mega speeds or anything because it's such a lovely day and I'm on the right bike for the job today. So we're up into 6th gear now, 40 miles an hour, 2,500 revs, just chugging along lovely. So let's run through this bike in the usual fashion, shall we? So these mirrors, these are aftermarket ones they put on. Um, very nice little dinky sort of classic look to them, very clear see everything behind there a little bit of my elbows but nothing to worry about so they're nice oh I can see straight away now the charm of these bikes I really can <laughs> this is this is lovely so nice little dinky twin dials there little red needles all, all still pretty easy to read that's all good obviously it's a naked bike but it doesn't matter N nice little blast hit me in the chest nothing too bad so with just a whiff of throttle, it's gone up to 50, opening up a bit more, it's pulling really nicely in top gear up to the legal limit, 60 miles an hour, and at 60 we are doing just under 4,000 revs at 60 miles an hour, so very relaxed cruising. Let's take it down to 50-ish. So the seat initially when I sat on it does feel a little bit sort of hard, shall we say. Um, but I've been on the bike for a while now and you, you kind of nuzzle into it so it's no, no problems at all and it also it feels very very narrow at the front so um, if you were a lot shorter than me uh, you should be able to get your feet down okay so vibration wise at this speed in top gear nothing at all coming through the, um, the bars and just that most nicest of sort of vibrations coming through the uh, 
foot pegs just a little rumble is all i can the best way i can describe it very pleasant not not a buzzy horribleness at all just very pleasant so no riding modes on this no electronic suspension everything is totally built to a cost hence the price and you really don't need it the um the suspension feels nice slightly bumpy road here all feels very plush front forks feel nice over the bumps back end feels good it feels quite um i didn't didn't check the wheelbase but it feels quite a long bike you know quite lazy relaxed handling but that's what you want So we'll just give the front brake a bit of a squeeze, see what that feels like. Yeah, not bad at all. Quite impressive, try it again in a minute. So down to fourth gear now. Open it up a bit, get the revs up. Fourth gear, full throttle, 5,000. So again, minimal, minimal, this is good minimal vibrations coming through the bars and just a little bit of vibes coming through the foot pegs but do you know what guys this is very impressively smooth this is much better than I thought it would be right we're down to third gear now we've got the revs right up 6,000 rpm now which is nearing the max tiny tiny buzz through the bars tiny buzz through the foot pegs but all in all very very good in terms of uh, vibration. So we're back into top gear now. 60 miles an hour. Oh, that is really nice. Minimal vibrations throughout the whole bike. I like that a lot. So the riding position is, best way I can describe it, relaxed, very, very relaxed. Nice and upright. The bars are quite high here. Uh, you could rake them forwards and backwards to fit you if you're smaller or taller. Nice and wide, lots of leverage on the bars. Leg position is perfect. Straight out with your legs and straight down at 90 degrees or just slightly back from 90 degrees with your knees. Loads of leg room. Oh, guys, this is just pure joy just riding, riding this like this in this sort of weather. Right, we'll just try that front brake again. Full on front. Very good. Right, we'll do a quick 0 to 60. Nothing behind. Here we go. First gear. Yeah, quite respectable. About five or six seconds. When you um, open it up with that air box, air filter, you can really hear the induction roar. Um, I've read quite a lot of reports that um, a lot of people fit the aftermarket pipes on these. Um, and I, I think that would really um, make this bike better and just give, give that more kind of classic noise coming out the back. Because exhaust-wise, exhaust, exhaust -wise, it's quite quiet. Okay, so we've got a little few, few bends coming up now. Let's attack them a little bit, shall we say. Top gear, 60 miles an hour. See what it's like around these bends. Yeah, no, no nasty sort of pogo effect in the uh, rear shock there. All good. No, I can 100% see the, uh, the attraction and the charm of these. And it looks cool as well. Okay, let's just do some roll-ons. So we're going to go down to fourth gear now, 50 miles an hour, wide open throttle. So there's your 50, there's your 60, and it keeps going. So performance-wise, it's nice. I mean, up to now, I've, I rode all the 500 Hondas and they're absolutely fantastic value for money and performance. But I think with this, you could just feel that extra, those extra 150 cc's or so, giving you that bit more torque. 
but it's a very very relaxed engine it doesn't feel stressed at all and it feels much better quality than I thought it would be you know these are built built in India I believe and honestly this is a very nicely put together motorbike the, the gearbox is Suzuki standard I would say it's very very slick very very nice through the gears up and down can't fault that at all right let's try 30 miles an hour fueling just to check for any nasties in the fuel injection so 30 mile an hour just under third gear sweet as a nut wow just purring along like a little kitten no hunting no surging no snatchiness wow Two and a half thousand revs now, 30. That's fine, lovely. Wide open throttle, 40, 50, 60. And it keeps going and going. Yeah, that's really nice. So all the switch gear guys, all looks quite familiar actually from a sort of Japanese bikes, you know. This here, almost, the, the high and low beam looks exactly the same off my Kawasaki Ninja. <laughs> so hard on the front brakes, there's not a huge amount of dive in the front. It's not too bad at all. This is pure delight, this is. I'm enjoying this more than I thought. Uh, flickability, yeah, it feels pretty good. Nice. I say because it's, it's got a bit of weight to it, it feels very stable. You know, it wouldn't be too affected by crosswinds. So, guys, if you're new to biking on an A2 license, definitely check out one of these. This is a really nice bit of kit. Nice riding position, lovely charming engine, very relaxing to ride, really cool, very very good looking bike. Nice road holding, suspension feels good. Let's just try the back brake out. Oh that's got a good bit of bike to it as well. Sometimes you push the back brake down it doesn't do anything but yeah that's nice. I do like that low speed running though. But it really, the engine and the whole bike feels very well put together. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this good at this price point, but it is, it's nice. Uh, throttle response. Obviously no rider modes on this, so it's just it's just a standard throttle, it's not snatchy, it's not really sharp. You pull it back and it accelerates, yeah. Slight, slightly soft throttle response, but there's nothing wrong with that. So riding position's nice guys. Performance is lively. I'd actually like to know what these do to a gallon to be honest because I know the Hondas are amazing up to 90 to a gallon UK gallons from like the CB500 range obviously this is a much bigger engine but I just if anybody's got one of these please put a comment and let me know what you're getting out to a gallon out of these because it'd be nice if they did like sort of 60 70 to a gallon You know what there's times in motorcycling where you kind of go i'm really really happy and glad to be a motorcyclist and this right now is one of those times lovely scenery we're in deepest dorset here in the south of england minimal traffic and on the right bike for the job happy days
also 40 mile an hour to see what this runs like in a 40 limit 3000 revs yeah it's very very smooth quality feeling engine very impressed with that feels nice and sort of light in the steering not heavy at all so again if you are um, a newcomer to biking I think you're going to really get on well with this lovely bit of bottom end pull yeah you can feel the fact that it's a 650 So guys, really, to me, this is a five-star motorbike. Great value for money. Lovely to ride. So you have to just get your head into a different mindset with a bike like this. It's not about speed, it's just about pottering along like this, going out with your mates, going and stopping at a pub for a, a pint, or a bit of food, or whatever you do. It's just really nice. I'm impressed how smooth the engine feels. There's no nasty sort of vibrations or anything. 5,000 revs now. 6,000. Yeah, it's becoming a little bit buzzier at that speed, but to be honest, you just chuck it into top gear, come down to three and a half, four thousand 4,000 revs, and that is lovely wind blast is totally acceptable at this sort of speed yes guys very uh, I would highly recommend one of these well let's wrap it up now guys see how she goes into neutral lovely and easy I say the gearbox on this is is a is a joy really nice just leave it running for the uh, obligatory sound test for you all so twin twin pipes on this lovely that is superb Let's have a final little walk round her, shall we? So I would assume it's just a standard bulb in there. Oh, these are extra as well, the gaiters. Glad it's got spoke wheels, that adds to the charm. So there's your oil cooler. All nice modern fuel injection. ABS is standard here in the UK. Big old engine casing there, nice, easy to read. Oil level, all basic stuff, but but nice, isn't it? Quite a nice long seat. You could take a passenger on the back of that quite nicely. See what she's like to push around. Nice handle here to grab hold of. Yeah, see, so you just notice it a bit when you push it off the sides down there. It just feels slightly weighty. I mean, an average straight purse would be fine. That's easy to push around, no problem at all. Really good. Let's see what she's like to go onto the centre stand. Ah, very easy, lovely. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and this bike. Please feel free to share this video and subscribe to my channel. Post your comments, please, if you've got one of these. I'd really like to know how it's going, uh, what sort of fuel, fuel economy you're getting, that sort of stuff. Um, I may well take out the, um, the bullet next because, uh, yeah, I've really got a soft spot, soft spot for these. Anyway, guys, take care. Um, I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to go for another little blast on this for, well, a cruise, shall we say. And I shall catch you all again on the next video review. This is Mark signing off. Take care, guys. All the best. Bye-bye.